Aleluia. Louva a glória. Aleluia. We give to you the peace of the Lord and the reverence of the word. Those who can be standing up. First book of the Bible, Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. And the word of God. Thus Noah did. According to all that God commanded him, so he did. 7 5. Seven, five. Who cannot you have the Bibles open? And here it says And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. Noah was And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him to do. We bless your people, your church, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. The word of God says that he created man and his word. And lots say he is a permissive of creation of God. And he created, before he created man, he created all the things. So that then, that the man can make a house, live there, a life of peace, tranquility, and peace. But the Bible says that the man He made a choice. He resolved to disobey the Lord of what he commanded. And the Bible says in time, and that the imagination and the thoughts of man was continuous. And it's really interesting of what the Lord shows of what happened to the mind, the heart of man. It speaks of a moment that's written in the Bible that God regretted, repented. And God repented of making man on the face of earth and more. And it hurt his heart. And he couldn't think or imagine what moment of sadness moment of anguish 
A singular moment is that this moment when the Lord looks at his creation. When he looks at the mind and heart, he sees that the man was distant from the plan that he had for the life of man. And it hurt God, something that I just said. And we can think like this. Why the heart of God was heavy. You know why? Because the only way out for me and you, for humanity, is the one that's written all the way in the book of John. Three sixteen, and it says that God loved the world no matter what and he even revealed his own son so that all that don't believe believe and so they can have life eternal he had to he had to reveal his own son and let his own side die, son die. And it hurts me to even think a little bit. To lose your own son. Jesus, he gives from his dad the salvation of all men. You know what's even heavier? that not even all men recognize this. From not recognizing this, what he did for your life. But the Bible says that at that time, man he found grace above the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this. There was one man that he didn't walk like the other people walked. He didn't think like the other people thought. And in his heart, he didn't have those anguish in his heart. And the Bible says, The Bible says that Noah found grace. What is grace? Favor? Grace is the manifestation of the love of God. So in those days, God was manifesting His love his grace and his favor and his mercy. <clears throat> the prophet Habakkuk okay, said that, that God gives mercy. It's a moment of error. But God provided the mercy, the escape. The world was going to be destroyed. But out of this destruction, the Lord provided the salvation. And the name of the Lord, your name will be salvation. The Bible says, brethren, that he resolved to talk to men and say that they found grace. You know why we are here tonight? Because out of all the heartlessness of our heart, 
we have to find grace and in front of the Lord. And through the grace, you are saved. This doesn't come from me. Doesn't come from you. Doesn't come from any of us. The grace it comes from, it comes from the Lord. And the only thing that we can do is accept this grace. Accept this present from God. This favor from God. Just like the prophet Isaiah says. His son he gave us. And his name will be Marvelous God of Eternity, Prince of Peace. So this grace. So this grace. Undeserving love that they have prof prophesized that was showed so that everyone could be saved. And that era from today's days humanity is condemnated. If I believe in Jesus I will be saved. But if I don't believe I am con condemned. You're already condemned. But then comes the Lord with His grace and reaches the man. And it's interesting that Jesus in the New Testament says something interesting. If you believe in the Lord, if you, you, you believe, you are saved. Not only you, but you and your house, you and your family. And this month we are praying for this, for the salvation of our families. Not for the salvation just you, but your whole entire house and your whole entire family. But I want to tell you something. You, me, we are responsible for the salvation. The Lord got here, got to Noah, and said to Noah, and told Noah that he would have to create, construct his salvation, and said, Noah, you're going to have to create an ark, 300 cubic feet. Three hundred fifty in length and thirty in height. The Lord gave the measures, the measurements. Salvation, He has its uh, measurements. It's in what the Lord has projected to us. Three hundred. cubic 30 50 it's talking about the trin trinid about the father about the holy spirit but do you have the lord no so you don't have the lord and you don't have the holy spirit the Lord, he says about this. He says, who has, who doesn't have the, the son, doesn't have the father. So the project of salvation in my life isn't, isn't being constructed in a farm, in a rushed form, or in a form those that the Lord has ordinated and manifested for my life. So it's necessary that your son, so that your father, and be baptized for your son, his Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a project of salvation for me and you and for our lives. It's the ark. It's the embarkment. It's where you have to enter. 
And the Lord says about this, talks about this. In the ark, there was only one door. Did you know that? Only one door. The project of salvation for my life, there's only one door. Only one entrance. And Jesus says, I am the door. Who enters through me, you will be saved. You enter, leaves, and we'll find the pasture. I enter in the project of salvation, and then I leave to the eternity. And nothing will, will I need. Nothing will I need. And the Bible says that the Lord, he talks to Noah. It was just like that. My project was established and it can't be changed. The Bible says, brethren, that we can't change anything in the, in the Bible of the Lord. Maybe we want to alter the project. Probably make the project make meet our demands but I'm gonna say something about the project our if I try to change my name of the book of life will be changed the plagues it's all the way in apocalypse all those plagues will be brought above my life he has to accept completely the project of God upon his life. And the Bible says that God talked to Noah and he completed everything that the Lord told him to do. God told, talked to Noah at this night he's demanding. In Brazil we say Demand who can and obey who has demise. Can or cannot. So he is demanding. So if I have, if I'm wise and if you're wise, and the path of the salvation goes through the obedience. You must pass through the obedience. The things of the Lord is so easy. The path to life is up to deviate from hell that's beneath us. God talked to Noah and the Lord says that God demanded and I think that God demanded and declared, decreed, and consulted Noah. He could have made two choices, accept or not. The decree of God. Because he, he had free will. And God doesn't take that, the free will. So God decreed, God told, He advised, and the Bible says that the that Noah accepted. He accepted the blessing of the Lord, because the blessing of the Lord is not add on plans. God's giving great advice. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So this great, this great Lord, this merciful God, so that night, that moment, that day, of His grace, of His favor, of His mercy, talking to man, to save all of His house, to save all of His family. And the Bible says, brethren, that he saw the Bible of the Lord, the word of the Lord. 
He gave the start of the arc. And when the ark was ready, the Bible says that Noah made everything that the Lord ordained. He did everything that the Lord ordained. And what is ordained? <laughs> I am weak, so I go look in the dictionary, which means organize. Prepare, prepare, put in order. There was a king, I don't remember if he was from Israel or Judah, but he was in the part of Israel. Is it, is it keys? Ezekiah said, put in order your house. He was king. Ezekiah, he was king. And we are kings of ourselves. Who commands here is me. Who commands here is me. Now above me, there's a bigger than me. And the prophet John the Baptist talks about this. He grows and diminish. So he goes to the king. Put, put your house in order. You're thinking what? You know what the king did at that moment? He didn't think of anything. He thought in one thing. Putting his household in order. He went, he looked to the wall, cried, bitterly, and received the blessing that he needed for his life. He realized that he needed the Lord. He was king, but he needed the Lord. And only the Lord could have relieved his life because he was going to die. And that advice was the advice of life for that king, for that man. And my brethren, prepare. Prepare for what though? You're here with us. Oh, but Lord is asking me to prepare. Prepare for what? Prepare for this. Jesus is coming home, coming back. Prepare for the, the rapture. Prepare to live in heaven so you can have your own home in eternity. Yesterday, I was thinking of a song. You already imagined, brother, how it's going to be in the glory. And I was thinking of that. How is it going to be in the glory? I give a quick look. I remember of John. Lord looked at John and said, come here. Apocalypse 3. And... John saw lots of things, things that were extraordinary. And John saw a new heaven and a new earth. My brethren, there was, there exists a new heaven and a new earth. And why does that this exist? Because this heaven and this earth will pass and before the earth passes you will pass because the past the rupture for me hopefully it will become 
it will be coming a little bit sooner. It's time to choose in between the blessing and the curse and the life and death. And John had to choose if he was going to live or die. Sometimes you think if, you, who, if God chooses if you live or die, no. I choose. The choice is mine. You, he, you represented two people, King Rabba and Jesus. Who would you choose? The people chose King Rabba. Rabbas. My brethren, my sisters, God has a project mar that's marvelous for you, for our home and our family. And the desire of God is that everyone will be saved. Because the one that talks to the Lord in any way and God doesn't even wait that Noah went to him. He's the one that went to Noah and talked to Noah. And this night, the Lord is here present talking to me, talking to me, talking to your life to prepare ourselves, to prepare ourselves because the day he comes, he is, he is close. And Jesus talks about this. Look at the days of Noah. If you do it without marriage, everyone was distracted. And the end came, and the door closed. The door of grace, one day it's going to close. The day that the faithful church, Jesus' church, will be raptured. And travel by train. It's pasturing. And there was an opportunity for me to prepare, to prepare, to put my life in order. Because the end is coming. Because Jesus is coming. Because the church is going to be raptured. And they luge. And they came. And the Bible says that Noah and his three sons, Noah's wife, and the three women of the sons of Noah, they're all saved. You know what means number eight? Grace. It's the grace. So this grace that is being offered to me and you, to each one of us. The interesting thing about the ark, when the ark was constructed, he didn't have a, they didn't have a lemmy, not of, there was no cell, there wasn't atomic energy. He didn't have anything. Noah entered the ark. And he went guided by the Lord. He went to Nicodemus. Nicodemus. And Nicodemus says, I know you are from God. Because what you do is what the people from God do. And the Lord said something interesting. He said, the wind blows where it wants, and it doesn't hear your voice. It's like all of those that are born from the Holy Spirit. Noah was navigated from the water of the Holy Spirit. and cared from the Lord. 
he didn't need anything. There was not one damage to the Ark. And they got to a place that the Lord has determined for them. As God ordained. And Noah did what he said. Appointed to the Lord, the Lord said. He wants to guide our lives. The Lord says. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the one that guides me. So he says to Nicodemus. You need to be. Reborn of the water and the spirit. He was reborn because he left the Lord guide his life. He didn't do any force, he provided everything. He constructed the ark, went inside, all the animals. Nothing but supplies. He didn't lack anything. The Lord showed tonight the man that is here with us. He got here tired because he has a, a little boat with rams. A rowboat. He's rowing and rowing. He doesn't get out of the same place. I'm in the difficulty. The wind, the waves of the ocean, the thing's complicated. And the, and the Lord makes a, a proposal. The boat is your life. The rows, the paddles is what you do to get out of one position to another to get better in life to be happy it's that thing that the man needs to resolve their problems and reach their objectives in life and it's really tiring I'm telling you but the Lord shows you a proposal a better thing. He offers you an ark. The ark is the the covenant, covenant for your life. And this man, he had knowledge this night that this ark, that this project of God, he was invited to enter it. The Lord invites all of us to enter the ark, to enter this project, and let the Lord guide us, to guide our lives. When we're in the presence of the Lord, my brethren, everything it goes well. Go after first the kingdom of God and, and everything else. And just like I said, I'm going to repeat the blessing of the Lord enriches us. The part, the moment that he resolved to obey, to do what the Lord had projected for his life. I want that everything does well in my life and reach this new this, this eternity, this new heaven, new earth, I just need to do one thing. Obey the voice of the Lord. Amen.
Sa First, Lord, for one more time, you may use your mercy for our lives. May you give us advice for because you have a project ready for us, Lord, for a rescue for our souls, and that we can have refuge in your eternity, manifestation in your love and your favor in our Lord, in our lives. Thank you, protect us, Lord, and we're very grateful. And then we just, in the wonderful grace, if of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and a sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit, we'll be the people of God for now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And those who are with us right now. Stay where you are. Raise your hand so they can receive. We can invite you to return other times. We have churches of deduction on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, church, church of women, Thursday, Sunday morning at 10.30, and Sunday night at 7.30. But tomorrow, we won't have anything here in the morning. You, the church, are invited to be with us, invited to be with us at Hollandale. Twenty-five miles, the church of Hollandale. We will have at eight in the morning. Baptism. We have nine people from the church going down the waters. It's a special moment for the family, the church too, because the church is their family. The church, body of Christ, and we must be present at this moment. Cry with those cry, and be happy with those. Rejoice the ones that rejoice. Full. And it's 
nine people that are confessing in front of God and those that are dying to the world and reviving for the Lord, for Christ. Die to the world and be reborn to Christ. The Apostle Paul says, Today, I'm not living anymore because Christ lives in me. Our brethren, you're going to be present, glorifying the Lord for this moment, and you that visit us tonight, grow, participate. For me, it was really important in Brazil, a brethren, he went and watched the baptism. The country in clouds. His comrade, he went there to look for his mom because he was looking for him to go home. When he got there, he saw baptism. It was a, a hill when he went up and he saw the people down there. He saw the people being baptized in a little bit. He went all the way down there. He was like, what's going on? I want to baptize. No, I want to baptize. And there's part of the Bible that seems really similar to that. Who will ask for me to be baptized? He was a youth. And he was baptized. And today, he is a brother in here in our church. That moment was really important. I saw something like that. That is marvelous. The angels of God going up and down the, that place. Because that's what's going to happen. Just going up and down. 9 a.m. There's going to be breakfast. You're invited for the breakfast too. Church of Holland. 10 a.m. in the morning. We're going to have a supper of the Lord. Of the 50 the celebration of 50 years of the Church Maranatha. This Supper of the Lord will be something really special. The church will be over there. And it will be transmitted. To 127 nations. With these brought in 126 nations. John said, looked at, a part in the Bible said, who are you guys? Where do you guys come from? The Lord says with them, these are the ones that have washed their clothes and those that are in the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of the Lamb. Amen? This this feast that the Lord has prepared. There's spot, there's space there. You can go. And there's space. You're gonna be accepted. We're gonna receive more than that. It's gonna be a blessing to learn. God has taken you a blessing if you go there, for you and your house, and for your family. He heard, and he did. Noah heard, and he did what God demanded. Amen? Tomorrow, 8 a.m., we have to get there a little bit more earlier. 7.30, to prepare, to pray, to glorify the Lord, because God is going to be present in that place. Amen. Peace to the Lord.
se fez o negócio. 